The Airbyte API is now available to everybody. So here's how you can start using it. All right, so first things first is you're gonna wanna head over to portal.airbyte.com. And this is the Airbyte developer portal where you'll need your cloud account to sign in to then get your API key. So that is what I'm going to do first. I will go ahead and log in using my email. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and log in. And now once I'm logged in, I'm going to go down to where it says API keys. You can see I already have one, but if I hit new API key, I can go ahead and name it. So I'm going to name it demo one and hit generate. And once I have my API key, I can copy and paste this over to somewhere where I can store this. Remember, you need to store this because we're only going to show this once. You're not going to be able to reopen it again. So again, make sure you download this or save it somewhere that you are going to remember. Okay, so now that we have access, let's go ahead and create a source. So the docs are actually going to be a great resource for you since it contains all of the required parameters and optional ones for every single source and destination. So I highly recommend you check this out and use it for any configurations you need depending on the actual source or destination you are setting up. So we're going to set up an exchange rates API source, but before we do that, we need to name the source as well as provide our workspace ID. If you have a cloud account already, you can easily do this by logging into your cloud instance and then going into the URL. The ID after the workspaces text inside of the URL is going to be the ID. So you can go ahead and copy this, head back into the docs website and then paste it in. And as you can see, this request over here on the right hand side is going to propagate with the workspace ID. So like I said, it's going to be a great resource for you if you want to configure any sources or destinations using the docs website. Now I'm going to go ahead and name this. I'm going to name this the exchange rates. Scroll down until I find the exchange rates source. And now we see two required strings, at least three, but these are the main ones that we have to fill out. So we have to give it a start date and an access key. Remember that this is going to differ depending on the source you choose. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in today's date. So 2023.04.25 at the time of this recording. And now as for my access key, I'm gonna to have to go ahead and grab that. So let me go ahead and paste this in. And then as our base, this is going to be specific to this API, but I'm going to put in USD for US dollars. I'm going to ignore the weekends and this can remain the same since there is only one source type. And now what you can do is copy and paste this and post it over into your terminal or wherever you're going to put this. One thing to keep in mind is you want to post your API token up at the very top here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And as you can see within the headers, we add in that bearer token to the request here. And now what we can do is copy, paste this into my terminal. And after I enter, you can see that we're returned back some metadata. And within that is a source ID. You're going to want to copy and paste this source ID somewhere to keep for future reference since we'll need it later in this video. Now that we have our source, we need to send it to a destination, but we don't have one set up yet. So let's go ahead and do that right now. The steps here remain the same. We're going to choose a destination, add in our workspace ID and then name the destination. For this demo, we're going to use Snowflake. So I will go ahead and enter in all of my information within Snowflake. So it's going to ask us for a host name, role, the warehouse name database. So I will go ahead and fill that out. I have already filled that out. So what I'm going to go do is copy and paste it over into my terminal. Now, before I go ahead and enter this in, you can see that I have my workspace ID. I've named it down here and I've added in all the necessary information for Snowflake specifically. Once I hit enter, it's going to give me back a destination ID as well as other bits of metadata. Now we want to also copy and paste over the destination ID and save that for the next step of this video. So now that we have both the source and destination, they're not talking to each other just yet. So we're not sending any data. That's where creating this connection comes in. And so let's go ahead and do that right now. So as I mentioned before, there are two required fields when creating a connection. It is going to be the source ID as well as the destination ID, which we should have copy and pasted somewhere in the last two steps of this video. Now, if we scroll all the way down, you can see that these are some of the body params that are going to be included with this request to the connections endpoint. The obvious two ones that we just said that are required are the source ID and destination ID. There are a bunch of other things that you can do within this endpoint, such as scheduling, data residency. I recommend you check out the docs if you want to learn more about this, but we're going to keep it very simple for this video. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste over the source ID that I copied and the destination ID as well. And I'm going to keep everything as is just for simplicity's sake. I'm going to copy this over. I'm going to paste this 
and go ahead and hit enter. Now that it's gone through and you can see that it's successful, we see that we have a connection ID. So the trend still occurs. We want to take this connection ID and the next step that we're going to do is we're actually going to trigger a run because the, now that this connection has completed, we have our connector, but nothing is actually happening right now. So if we go down to the jobs endpoint here, you can see that the required string that we need in the body params is actually going to be this connection ID. And so we're going to go ahead and paste that in the job type that we want to do. We want to do a sync since this is the first sync that we're going to do. Copy and paste it into our terminal. Go ahead and click. And now that you can see, we have a job ID and the status of it is running. If we want to check on the status of this run, then what we're simply going to do is copy and paste over this job ID, head over here into the get stat job status and details of the jobs endpoint, paste that over, copy it, paste it, and you can see that it is still running. If we head over to the cloud UI, you can see that this is synonymous with what we just saw in the API. And we're gonna go ahead and let this run and we'll show the end results to show that this was exactly working as intended once the sync is done. Now that the sync has completed, we're gonna head over to my Snowflake instance. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this. And if we go in here, we can see within the public schema under tables, which is where I've personally specified that I wanted the data to go, it's going to be in there. And now if I go into the data previews, we can see that we actually do have data coming in from the exchange rates API and is being fed into Snowflake. This is very simple data, but still awesome to see that the Airbyte API is now triggering syncs and creating connections within Airbyte Cloud. Now, if you wanna get started with the Airbyte API today, you can head over to api.airbyte.com, which will also be linked down in the description below. So go ahead and check it out. And as always, thanks for watching.